Oh, thanks for coming, guys. Welcome to the Bionicle Inspiration Series. Today, I've got an extra special treat for you. We're talking about the Toa and Nika, specifically how people have revamped and reimagined the Toa and Nika. So we're going to talk about all six of them today and different ways that people have approached the characters. So let's dive in. The very first mock is by Peter Shaker, and this is Amalgam Kongu. So let's be honest here, dual wielding crossbows might be the coolest thing in the world. So yeah, I love this. All these different shots of Kongu with them. He looks so freaking cool. I often forget that the Anika weapon for Kongu was actually just in fact a big crossbow piece. So it's nice to see that being expanded upon and explored a little bit further. Uh, also this custom and I guess maybe like slightly modified mask because the original does have a bit of asymmetry on the mask whereas this one here is just symmetrical. Um, but yeah, obviously it's a bit painted and stuff. It looks really, really nice. It actually looks really nice when it's symmetrical there. I think uh, the Kongu and Nika mask, the original one, the fact that it is asymmetrical and stuff, it made it look kind of creepy. It's it's oddly one of the weirdest, kind of freakiest looking Toa masks. Uh, so it's nice to see it's symmetrical. Although it's still a cool mask normally. Don't m misunderstand what I'm saying there. I think both are cool. But this one's just a little bit cooler. Also, the mask looks a lot cooler with this new color scheme here using teal and lime. Obviously, this is very much a callback to Kongu when he was a Matoran back in his McDonald's days. Y you know, when he actually worked at McDonald's serving fries. Not when he was a toy in the Happy Meals. Not not Mictoran Kongu. No, 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 no. Um, I do want to see fan art of uh, Kongu with like a little McDonald's apron and hat on being like, do you want fries with that and stuff? Yeah, that'd be cool. Anyway, the change of colors, very refreshing and very, very nice. Uh, it's also cool too to see those G2 Tahu masks in green on the shoulders there, were in lime green specifically. I imagine those are bootleg masks or maybe they're also painted like the, uh, the actual mask that he's wearing is. But either way, Seeing those in green, I don't know, I just wish we got G2 mask packs in different colours. Think of all the cool possibilities we could have had with all those different G2 masks in different colours. Would have been so cool. Anyway, fantastic mock. So, on to the next one now. This one is built by Solo Mox, and this is a revamp of Huki. So the original set, of course, had a fair amount of gun metal on it, and it's nice to see a revamp that maintains that and uses a lot more modern CCBS parts in gun metal to beef up the design and just make him look all the more awesome. Uh, I love the inclusion of the Hero Factory 2.0 armor, kind of like add-on thing on the torso. Uh, for reference, I'm talking about the same piece that's used on Fire Lord on the torso here in red, that specific piece here. I don't know, it just uh, it looks cool on Huki. The kind of circle pattern on the torso there just starts to look more like a heart light or an arc reactor of some kind. It just works really well on the torso. It's a nice touch. Uh, another nice touch are these tubes on the shoulders here. It's uh, really nice to see how those kind of round off the edge of the torso and it aids in the transition into the shoulders in some manner. It's, uh, it's a nice design. Uh, the legs are also really cool. The arms are nice. There's just a lot of cool stuff going on on this dude. This is a really solid, effective revamp of Huki. Over to Sharik now, he has revamped Matoro and Nika. This sword, stacking a bunch of these Chima crystals on top of each other to form the kind of, I guess, power core of the sword, that's a really nice play. Uh, it's also nice as a bit of a throwback to Matoro and Nika's weapon, because it's, it's certainly taking some inspiration from that, but it's uh, good to see it rebuilt with a bunch of other random pieces. It's, uh, it's a solid design. The torso here is wonderful as well. It uses uh, one of the somewhat more obscure Lego hockey torso pieces in white. Now, these were from a kind of construction adjacent wave of uh, sports sets where you got hockey characters as construction figures. Uh, they had a lot of helpful parts in them, but the sort of best part was that torso piece, which came in many colors, but of course here it's used in white. And yeah, it's a great part to include in your Bionicle mocks. So partnering that torso piece with those Exoforce robot arms in white, just slightly below that to look a bit like abs, really nice design. Also, these funky legs and feet, that's a super unique look, I dig it. Raven has done their own version or a bit of a revamp of Toa and Nika Jala. So while it's a little bit different from the gold weapon that the actual set had, I love the gold flame sword that's been used here. Always love a good flame sword, so this is a very welcome change. But you know what, that being said, now that I actually look at Jala and Nika's weapon, it kind of does form the rough shape of fire in a sort of more stylistic manner. I never really noticed that, that's kind of cool. Um, so actually a pretty welcome change too. It does act as a little bit of a subtle callback to some degree. Either way, fire swords are cool, so I love it. Uh, but there's also a custom mask that's being used on this revamp, and this certainly looks a lot like the original mask from the set, but... Uh, I don't know, I might argue this mask actually looks better than the original. You know, the Anika masks often get a bit of a, a bad rap for looking just a little bit off. It's not everyone's favourite looking masks. 
But, uh, you know, if you don't like those masks, you may want to pursue a custom mask route, very similar to this here. Uh, and this is just a, a perfect touch for that, a great alternative for that mask. Love that here. We've got some solid system highlights on this revamp that are very cool, like the kind of loincloth details. There's also some good greebling on the arms uh, and some armor on the legs too. That's some more nice system additions. Always a good touch to see stuff like that. Uh, also, Raven has revamped every single Toa Anika. Here's just a few quick pictures of them, but you can always check the links in the description if you want to see these in a little bit more detail. It's definitely worth checking out. So, hey, if you're liking these Toa Anika revamps, there's a lot more in the description below. Love this little stand too, just with a nice little symbol at the bottom, it's a, it's a good touch. Lovely little revamp of Jala. Captain Geo has built Hully Toa Mari of Water. No, 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 I know, I know what you're about to say, you're like, Ben, this is Toa Hully Mari, not Toa Hully Anika. But, maybe you hate Toa Hully Anika. Well, if you are planning on revamping the Anika, or specifically Hully, why not look into some of their other forms and take ideas from that and apply it to your revamp? You know, we saw Peter do that in a fantastic way by adopting the color scheme of Matoran and Kongu from before. So why not give your Hully Anika revamp some wings or the claws like her Mari form had? Or why not include some lime into the color scheme? You know, there's plenty of cool opportunities there that would work really well. So we can learn a lot from looking at other forms of the characters. Also, I'm featuring this because I looked forever and I couldn't find a revamp of Hully and Nika. Very few revamps of it exist, so you should build one. Few people do it. Anyway, I love the unique and custom claw elements on the wrist here. The claw elements appear to be custom pieces, I do believe. But I really like the touch of putting it as a uh, sort of wrist weapon, uh, arm weapon thing there. It kind of frees up the hand, which is not only practical, but just looks a lot cooler, let's be honest. Uh, I also enjoy these Glatorian shin armor parts on the top of the lower legs there. Those just look sick. That's such a uh, very, like... It's just a really cool piece, and using it there as not shin armor and having it kind of tie into the knee design, that's a really clever way of doing that. There's also a few other custom pieces on the torso here, as well as, again, another custom mask, uh, which obviously looks very similar to Hali Mari's original mask there, but, uh, you know, if you're doing some kind of interesting hybrid character that combines the look of Hali Mari and Hali and Nika, maybe you could use this custom mask here, and it's sort of like a bit of a bridging point between those two masks. Maybe. It's up to you. It's uh, whatever your creative impulses tell you to do. But uh, hey, these custom pieces really make this mark shine. It looks fantastic. And finally, the underscore double has revamped Nuparu and Nika. This is a brilliant mark, and this is actually inspired by some artwork. So I've got a picture of it here. This is some artwork by Spaceman Machiato. Uh, the image is really well done, and there's a very specific, unique look for Nuparu here that's a little bit different from the set, but Still taking some uh, some notes from it, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but it's great to see how this was then translated into this mock. Uh, I love the weapon here. It's almost like a punk rock portal gun weapon or something. It looks really rad. Uh, the wires hanging out here is a great detail, just using some of those whip pieces there. Such a cool, very helpful part. And, you know, they're also scattered all throughout the rest of the mock, but uh, it certainly makes for a very uh, distinct aesthetic. I love it. The Quasa spikes coming out of that Rachi back piece there are brilliant. You could very easily do that exact same technique, but actually build it onto a Rachi. You know, that way you could get a very different looking uh, custom spike for a Rachi mock. So, hey, really cool design. Also, the mostly all black color scheme is a very cool touch. Uh, it also makes the pops of red shine a lot more, which is great. And uh, the inclusion of that really stripping back the colors to, to make the red eyes pop was a, a lovely, lovely thought. This kind of tower thing uh, coming out of the back is is unique and very cool. I guess it's a bit of a callback to the Zamosphere kind of tower that was on uh, Nuparu and Nika. So I suppose that's storage for this gun. Uh, it's a unique look. You don't see enough mocks these days that have big old, like, towers or storage facility things coming out of their back, so it's a, it's a welcome addition. Uh, additionally, too, I love how this take on Nuparu is a lot more sturdy, strong, and a little bit hunched over. I think that's a really unique and good take on the character, because, uh, uh, you know, the Anika always, you know, pretty famously had very similar standard-looking designs, so it's nice to see them uh, really playing with the body shape here on Nuparu. That's a good welcome choice.
That's it for New Pyro, and that's it for all of these Anika revamps today. So yeah, hopefully if you are planning on revamping the to Toa Anika, I've given you a few ideas there, but you know, we saw some other cool, unique, interesting designs. Maybe that's given you a little bit of inspiration for some of the other things that you might be working on or planning on working on. Y you know, inspiration comes in all sorts of different ways. In the description below are links to all the mocks that you saw today, so be sure to check out the other builds that these fantastic builders have done, see what they've done, leave a like on their posts, comment on their posts, let them know your thoughts. They'd love to hear it, and I'd love it if you did that to them, because I can't do these episodes without these talented builders, so give them an extra special treat and let them know you love what they've done. In the description below are also links to my own social media, so you can check out some of the stuff that I've got going on over there if you are interested in doing so. Uh, and uh, additionally as well, in the description below is the submission email. It's also on your screen right now. So if you want to see your own mocks on the show, you can submit them to that submission email. Put an image, or put a few images, put a link, put whatever you want, some information, all sorts of stuff in that email. Chuck it my way, and then I'll do my best to feature it in a future episode of the show. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Happy building, and bye for now.